Hey guys, welcome to the video. Welcome to the cold garage. What I'm gonna be working on today, although this is gonna take days, couple of days, but what I'm working on now is the motor mount. The transaxle's rigid mounted. This will be rigid mounted. There can't be any flex between these because the engine and the transaxle are cast. Cast doesn't really have any flex. I mean, it's got a little teeny tiny bit of flex, but it's got basically zero flex compared to tubing. If my connection points are not very rigidly tied into one another, most of the support is gonna come through the cast, and I don't really want that. I don't want the weight of this engine to put any undue stress on the bell housing of the transaxle. I'm gonna make a motor plate here. It's gonna come down to the engine cage. However, even though I'm gonna be adding supports on my engine cage to tie it in and make it more rigid, there would still be too much flex in my engine cage here to be able to support this engine and not let it put a lot of stress onto the bell housing. So what I'm gonna do, and this might be overkill, it's probably overkill, but, uh, this is how I want it because I want to be able to tie this motor mount in very rigidly to this bell housing. This bell housing has a uh, inch and a half DOM piece of tubing that basically connects to right here. So this bell housing is very rigidly uh, bolted right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this motor mount here and then I'm actually going to make a bar that will somehow connect either this motor mount or it'll connect right to the engine cage here and it's going to run up and tie in somewhere up here with the uh, with the part of the chassis that the bell housing bolts to but even just that wouldn't be enough because that still because if that was all rigid and only bolted up here there would still be in my opinion too much flex so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this bar a, a turnbuckle. So it's going to have a, a, a clevis on either end here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a bracket here and a bracket somewhere around here, whether it be on the uh, engine cage or the motor mount. And what you'll do is you'll bolt it up there and then you'll turn it. And when you turn it, it's going to draw in. And what what I'll do, at least what my plan is, you'll bolt the motor plate on there on both sides, you'll put the turnbuckle in there, and then you'll turn the turnbuckle, and you're not going to put a lot of uh, stress on it, but you're just going to draw it in, draw everything up so that all of the flex is gone and it's, it starts to support some of the weight so that it takes some of that weight off of the flex plate. Not all of it. I'm not looking to carry the entire motor off of these turnbuckles but I want to make it you know everybody says a triangle is the strongest structure I want to make it so that from the chassis here running down onto the bell housing and that already exists because this bell housing is flat and it bolts to this uh, chassis right about here that's going to be one straight line this will be the other straight line and then this will be the other straight line so I wanna, I wanna tie my engine motor mounts in with a triangle so that there's no flex to the bell housing faceplate.
All right, so now this is my finished product. I took off the water neck and the water pipe and the exhaust manifold. I had to take all that stuff off and I took the intake off on the other side so that I could get in here to do some welding and I showed you some of that in the time lapse there. But I've got my tie rod mounted on here. I've got my motor mount plate. I've got this bracket here which comes in um, kind of like at an angle. It helps give extra support to the motor mount and it also ties in with the cage so that it can very, um, with a lot of strength and almost no flex, pull this way. It's going to pull up on the engine cage and it's going to pull up on the motor mount. I've got this bracket welded onto the tube that comes down here which is right next to this tube which is what the trans axle hangs off of. So like I said earlier, I'm trying to kind of make this my triangle to tie this motor mount in with the transaxle. Had I been planning for this Ecotech from day one on this chassis, I would have designed the chassis a little bit different so that it could um, harness the Ecotech and the transaxle together. The fact that I've got my engine cage that bolts onto the chassis is the reason that I'm having this flex. If I had done it the other way, I would have designed the chassis longer so that I could integrate the motor mounts onto the chassis and then have the engine cage out of there. So I'm not saying this needs to be done on every chassis you make. I'm just saying because I originally designed this for air-cooled and now have since gone with the water-cooled, I have to add this extra support and able to pull everything up so that nothing's sagging, if that makes any sense. And it might just be that I'm totally overkill, but I do know that without these, I can't get proper tension on this bolt. All right, so what you're looking at now is I've got a close-up. This is the motor mount. This is the bolt where it goes in, bolts into the block. I just want to show you how things do actually move quite a bit, is I'm going to loosen up the tie rod, and that should kind of relax and work its way down a little bit. All right, so right now I've got all of the, I've got the slack on the tie rod and the, the motor mount bolt has actually come down so much so that it would probably be a little bit difficult to get the bolt in there, but I think that's because the other side's got some tension on it. So now I'm going to put some pressure, I'm going to tighten up the tie rod a little bit. You should see that motor mount start coming back up because now the tie rod is drawing it back up towards the cage. So it actually moved quite a bit there. So now I'm going to put the bolt in finger tight most of the way. Not all the way, but most of the way. But it's finger tight. So right now it's almost all the way in, but it's, it's finger tight. First thing I'm going to do is just draw up on the tie rod so it's, it's no longer finger tight. So now I know that I've pulled this up enough that it's actually putting pressure on that bolt. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tighten the bolt, the motor mount bolt. Now the motor mount bolt is tight. Now I'm going to just draw this up a little bit more just so that I'm confident that I've actually hold some of the weight of the motor up. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I didn't go really tight. All I did is I snugged it up so that it put pressure on the bolt, tightened the bolt, and then I just drew this in a little bit more just to pull up on it a little bit. Now I'm totally confident that this motor mount is actually carrying some weight, number one, and number two, as the car is moving around, it shouldn't be able to flex because it's somewhat triangulated with the transaxle. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching the video on my motor mounts. Hopefully, it uh, is helping you guys possibly with an Ecotech swap. Get you out into the garage working on something, whatever. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.